Hi there, Year 11 Biology. I just wanted to make a quick video just to show some of you that may not be familiar with PowerPoint, some of the features of PowerPoint that can help make your presentation really visually engaging. Now, if you like most of those in my class, you're getting near the end of the research part of your depth study, which means you're going to be starting to think about how you're going to present your information. So you're going to be working on your script, that is what you're going to say, and the PowerPoint slides you're going to have with your presentation. Now, feel free to send drafts of your script to your teacher for some feedback. That's part of the process. We want to be able to give you feedback and make sure you're on the right track. Um, but when it comes to the slides, sure, we're happy to have a look at them. But most of the time, our feedback is going to be more pictures and less words. That's how you make a really engaging presentation when you're doing something like this depth study. Now, more visuals doesn't mean having a whole lot of pictures on the screen at once. One or two pictures, though, in your presentation, if they're done properly, can be a really visually engaging way to help tell your story about your organism. Now, there's lots of different ways you can get pictures into your slides uh, with uh, PowerPoint. I want to show you a couple of options that are inbuilt in the PowerPoint, though, that might make your uh, job a bit easier. Now, I'm using the MacBook version of PowerPoint here. The Windows version of PowerPoint will be essentially the same, but some of the tabs might be in a slightly different position. So if we start over here, I'm going to start on Home. That's just where it normally opens up to. And let's pretend this is not your title slide. This is maybe a slide halfway through your presentation. We're going to come over here to Insert. And there's these options here to insert different sort of objects or pictures. Now I'm going to choose 3D models. This is a relatively new addition to PowerPoint. And what it's going to do is bring up all of these different models that may or may not be relevant to your presentation. So not everyone's organism is going to be listed here, but certainly some of you are going to be lucky that there's going to be a really great 3D version of your animal or your plant that you can talk about using these models. So if I go to animated models, you can see some of the options here. There's a pterodactyl, there's a T-Rex, looks like a, a butterfly, probably a monarch butterfly. Uh, there's a great white shark, a hummingbird, a rhinoceros. I'm going to choose the T-Rex just because I don't think anyone's doing T-Rex for their presentation. And so we click it there. I'm going to insert the T-Rex. And what PowerPoint will do is it'll bring up that model and it's going to insert it into our slide. And because it's animated, this is a model that's actually going to be moving. So we can see here, and I'm going to resize it. This is a model of our Tyrannosaurus Rex. And there he is moving, walking, which can be a really effective way to present this information. Now, if I click back into his option here, up the top, there's all these different angles we can choose to have our T-Rex moving on or our organism moving on. And so depending on how we want to present or what we want to talk about, then there can be different options here that we can use for our model. Now, this option here in the middle, this sort of circular thing, allows us to manipulate how we want that T-Rex to present as well. So if I was doing a talk on the T-Rex, I might position him here, and then I might use this particular um, version of the uh, uh, 3D model to talk about perhaps the jaws of the T-Rex here. Whereas if I wanted to maybe talk about his tail, then I might choose a different angle where we can see the tail a little bit more clearly and talk about that tail. Now, as I said, there's lots of different animals there, lots of different options you can choose. Um, but something, if you do happen to have a 3D model you can look at, that can be a really effective way to present. Now, they're the animated models. Let me just choose, I'll go into biology here. And I'll just choose, I'll choose the lungs here just for, uh, just for visual purposes. So this is a 3D model that isn't animated, but again, can be still a really effective visual tool to help you present your information. So I'll just resize it here. And again, we can manipulate what sort of angle we want to look at when we're talking about our object here. So if I wanted to talk about the trachea, for example, I might be able to present like this. So here are the lungs and here is the trachea. The air goes down there and then into the lungs after that point there. So again, if you happen to be lucky enough that your organism has a 3D model you can use, that can be a really powerful way to present that information. Now, I'm just going to do a new slide here. There's a couple of options you can do. Up here where it says picture, 
You can go through your own pictures, a picture from a file if you found one on Google uh, that you want to save, for example, and then use that in your presentation. There's a whole lot of stock images you can use, but the online pictures here can be a powerful tool as well. So let's pretend that you're, let's just do dinosaur, um, just to keep the theme going of this particular um, video. And then it's going to bring up a whole lot of video, a whole lot of pictures rather, of dinosaurs that you might find are useful, again, for your presentation. Now, most of them are going to be Creative Commons, which means there's no licensing required. But because this is a private um, presentation, you can unclick that and that's going to open up some more options for you as well. And so you might find if you're doing whatever organism that you might find a picture that really helps tell the story of what you want to talk about. And so we click on the picture, insert, and then that picture's there ready for us to talk about in our presentation. Now there is also an option if we go to home, uh, if we go to insert rather, and video over here, we can insert a video from an online film. Now, if you then have something on YouTube you wanted to show us, you can insert the uh, copy and paste the URL from YouTube into here and then insert, and it will put that video in there ready to play. Now, I'd sort of, the video can be a really effective way to present your information, but I would say that I'd, I'd advise you against using it unless you're really confident with it or it's a sh really short piece of video you want to watch or if you can't find an appropriate picture to use. The reason being is when you present, there is a bit of a lag time when you want to start the video playing. Um, and if the video is really sort of busy, it can detract from what you're trying to say as well. But again, that's another option you can look at there. Now, when I said before you want to have more pictures and less words, it's okay to have words on your slide. We just don't want to see a lot of words and we certainly don't want to see you just reading off of the slide. The more words that are on the slide, though, the way our brain works, then that's going to detract from us as the marker from what you're actually saying if we're trying to read the words on the slide at the same time. Whereas a picture that's going to emphasize what you're saying is going to be a really effective way to do this. Now, of course, feel free to use palm cards, use some dot points if you want to jog your memory and remind yourself you want to talk about, that's all fine. But again, less words, more pictures is going to be the most effective way to present this information. So I hope that's helpful. Short little video to give you some guidance on how to use PowerPoint. Again, feel free to ask your teacher for more, more help or more guidance. Please send us some drafts of your script so we can go through that and give you some feedback on that as well. And I hope you're all nearing the end of the research part, if you haven't already, so you can really start thinking about how you're going to present your information.